Thank you. It is great to be back in the Rio Grande Valley. South Texas is an extraordinary place. And South Texas is paying the price for the disaster of the open borders under the Biden administration. For the past decade, John Cornyn and I have repeatedly brought our colleagues from the Senate down to South Texas to the Rio Grande Valley to see firsthand what's happening. Because you cannot understand what is unfolding, particularly over these last three years, without seeing it with your own eyes. On this trip, we came down with five senators all together. We started the trip by going to the Border Patrol station and joining their midnight muster. And we took the opportunity to st stand in front of the men and women of this sector in the Border Patrol and say thank you. Thank you for the heroes that risk their lives every day trying to keep this country safe. And I got to say, for the men and women of the Border Patrol to have their job frustrated and made impossible by the political leadership of this administration, by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Alejandro Mayorkas, is utterly disgraceful. The men and women of the Border Patrol are frustrated. They're deeply frustrated because they risk their lives apprehending people only to see, turn around and see them let go over and over and over again. After that, we went out on midnight patrol with the agents. Some months ago, Corrine Jean-Pierre stood at the White House podium and said, people are not just walking across the border. It's simply not happening. Everyone here today know that, knows that was a lie. She was lying on behalf of the President of the United States in the White House with the President's seal in front of her. My response at the time, I said, Corrine, come to the border anytime. Come out with me, and I guarantee you within an hour, we will encounter a group. Well, last night, within the hour, we encountered a group. It's about 20 people. They had voluntarily turned themselves in, as many, many do in the Rio Grande Valley. They were predominantly women and children. And we spent about 40 minutes talking to that group. There was one little girl who's 13 years old. She had no family with her. She was unaccompanied. There was another little girl who was 16 years old. She had no family with her. There was a little boy who was 15 years old. She had no family with her. We asked them about the violence they'd faced on the travel over. The look in those kids' faces was horrifying. For me, the most disturbing part of the conversation was a little girl in the back of the group who was 10 years old. And she had a man who said he was her father with his arm draped forcefully around her. And it was obvious to anyone who's ever seen a father and daughter that these two were not related. At one point when we asked about her mother, we saw her look to the man who was claiming to be her dad, wondering what's the answer supposed to be. During the Trump administration, they were regularly DNA testing kids who were with adult men. And upwards of 30% of them were not related to the adult men. One of the first things Joe Biden did was end the DNA testing. Because apparently Democrats don't care if that 10-year-old girl is related to the adult man that the cartel handed her over to. There was also a couple that we met from Moldova. A husband and wife and a little two- or three-year-old girl. The little girl was precious. But what these people had been through, the abuse that they had endured at the hands of human traffickers, you could see the pain on their faces. We asked the unaccompanied minors, where are you, where are you going to stay? And one after the other, they said, I'm going to stay with my tío, my uncle. Apparently, there are a lot of tíos in America. And yet the 13-year-old told, told us her tío didn't know she was coming. And I got to say, it was horrifying as we left them, knowing there's a very good chance those teenage girls are being taken off to be sex trafficked, to be trapped in forced prostitution, as is happening to thousands and thousands of teenage girls. 
When we were on the border, we also saw a colored wristband. Some of you may remember I asked Alejandro Mayorkas about those colored wristbands, and he told us he had no idea what they are, which was truly stunning because almost every illegal immigrant wears one, and they're color-coded for how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. You can find them littering the grass by the Rio Grande River, and yet the man allegedly in charge of securing the border hasn't bothered to talk to the Border Patrol agents, hasn't bothered to go to the border and see the children being abused because of these open borders. This is a humanitarian crisis. South Texas sees the thousands of children abused, sees the thousands of women sexually abused, sees the dead bodies. We saw pictures, picture after picture after picture. 853 people died last year crossing illegally into this country. And with the war that is unfolding in Israel, the risk of terrorism in the United States, I believe, today is greater than it has been at any point since 9-11. Border Patrol has sent written guidance to Border Patrol agents be on guard for Hamas and Hezbollah seeking to enter the country and carry out the same atrocities they're carried out in Israel. I have a simple message for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and every Democrat senator. Come to the border. Come to the Rio Grande Valley, come out on midnight patrol and look in the eyes of the little children who are suffering from the, these inhumane policies. This is horrific, this is wrong, and the people of South Texas know this is an utter disaster.